Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson, and today I am doing a repotting video of all of the pieces of my queen, my Monstera Deliciosa plant that I've done many videos on where you've seen that I pruned back my plant and then I've done water propagations which were these and then I planted these plants and you've seen that in a video too. Now I want to actually plant all of these pieces into one bigger pot to make me one big bushy plant. I'm getting in and doing this now because I've seen that these plants are stabilised and they are growing out new leaves but they have been getting attacked by thrips constantly and all the time in my indoor terrace garden. So now I am going to, as I said, repot them and then I'm going to give them all a good wash over on all of their leaves and stems with a neem oil and dishwashing liquid mixture with water, give them a thorough clean off and then I'm going to have them living here in my kitchen. This is where I'm going to move them to because I have my Monstera Deliciosa Alba Variegata in here now on its own and it's doing really well. I did a video where I had to go in and prune that all back and start water propagations. They're still looking okay and mother plant is starting to get a new leaf already. So I'm really happy about that. But I'm not going to show you that plant in this video. You'll have to wait and you will see a video about that coming up later. But you can see the leaf down here at the front here. This is my Monstera Deliciosa Alba Veria Garta, the top new leaf that was coming out and that is water propagating and starting to get fresh new roots already. So it's doing really well. But behind me on the shelf here, you can see the top part of my queen. Yes, this is the top part. I had two beautiful leaves on this propagation that I planted in its own pot. And when it started getting its first leaf, I decided to move it to my kitchen away from everything else so that I can keep control of the thrips so I can get fresh, lovely new leaves on this plant that don't get too damaged. Well, she put out this lovely immature leaf here with no fenestrations or slits in it. And that came out just before I did my video on pruning back my Monstera Deliciosa Alba Variegata. And then not long after that, a week after that, I started pushing out another leaf. And now I have this new leaf at the top here that's come out. And it has three, it has two slits. Well, actually, there's still two fenestrations and one slit. As the leaf gets bigger, they might split open and become split. But at the moment, there are fenestrations and slits in this leaf. So I am so pleased about this and it's looking green and lush. It has been attacked slightly by thrips. It has got some streaks and so forth in it, but the leaf is completely clear right now. I have been keeping good control and cleaning it nearly every single day. So it's doing okay and a third leaf is on the way out. So this part of my Monstera Deliciosa, I am going to keep on its own in its pot because it's doing really well and I like that. But the rest here, I want to just make one big floor plant that I'll be able to enjoy. Now I'm going to bring some of them closer just so you can see the damage that happens with these thrips um, and all sorts on them. So I'll take this one. So I hope you can see on the leaf that's here, this is browning and it is due to the plant having been attacked by thrips and then getting some kind of fungal infection or something like that. So it's happened on that leaf and also the little leaf down here you've seen I've had to prune around on it a little bit. But other than that, look at this. There are so many new leaves coming out and they still look beautiful. So why not? That was an original leaf from the mother plant and it is still beautiful. This is an original leaf from the mother plant as well that had been sitting with no new growth for the longest time and then suddenly it grew out a lovely leaf here which got attacked by thrips and it started to brown on the underside and so forth. But if we look under, da -da, there is a baby leaf coming out again and I want to try and keep this leaf as clean and clear as possible. So it's still happy despite the thrips infestation that is an awful nightmare to stop on these plants if you get them. But I'm not gonna give up, I am not 
gonna give up on my queen. You can even see this stem here that had no leaves on it when I planted it, has grown out a leaf down here and a new baby one has just come out here as well. So they're all doing really well, every single stem. And then I have another bigger one here with a big leaf and I have another one back here with a big leaf from my queen, the original leaf. And that has produced three new leaves on this stem. And I have a stem in the pot that has two new leaves and a new baby one on the way out. And you won't believe it, from all that time ago, when I started doing my water propagations, I had one stem that I left in water because it didn't do anything for the longest time. Just a stem, no leaves, no roots, just a couple of nodes. Well, <laughs> well, if you look here, it decided to grow out a snake. <laughs> so it has a root and I am just going to plant this into the pot with the rest of the stems because why not? It's going to get a leaf bud at some point and carry on now that it's got a lovely big root like that. So back in the water for a minute until I get myself sorted out with all my bits and pieces here. So basically all I'm going to do is move around a little bit here first. Oh. So a little bit of juggling in here. Put that one there. Um, also move that one over there, put my big pot here. So now, I've got these all here. My leaves and my bits and pieces, my lovely mature leaf. I have my new pot. This pot is big enough for all of these stems and these are all going to do very well together in this pot. I don't just, I mean, this plant looks lovely as one stem and I'm really enjoying the look of it, but I want a big bushy plant as well and I'm going to have a bushy Monstera Deliciosa Alba Variegata as well with all my propagations that are going on and they'll be ready in a month or two. So I've already put some soil in the pot. As I always say, make sure that you have a breathable pot to start with. It's absolutely imperative that your roots of this plant can breathe as much as possible because you will get root rot as quick as day if you have this plant in darker, situation, a low light situation, and you've watered it too much, root rot. And if you have it in a bright situation and you water it too much, root rot. <laughs> but if you have it in a terracotta pot and you've watered it, the water won't be able to stay in that pot for too long to create root rot unless you are watering your plant an awful lot every single day. But you know that when you water this plant, you need to allow it to dry out completely between waterings and then water it through again. That's the best way to do it with this plant. Test it with a water gauge or your finger or whatever to make sure you're not over watering. Make sure the pot always has a hole in the bottom, a drainage hole, and make sure you have a saucer. You'll be able to see if you've watered too much because water will seep through. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. The soil, make sure the soil is an aerated soil. Any kind of gardening soil will do, but not on its own. You need to amend it with Perlite, if you have that, lecker balls, biochar, bark, big pieces of bark or orchid bark or something like that, a bit of sand and mix that all together to make a loose, well-draining, airy soil. Now it does really depend on where you live. If you're living in a hot environment, you're only going to need some kind of bark or some kind of big chunks of some kind of material to just hold the plant in the pot but quickly draining, but if you're living somewhere where you keep your plants indoors and it gets cold or so forth in the winter and dark, you can have a soil-based um, mixture, of course, that's very normal, but it has to be aerating. I cannot stress that enough. Anyway, the soil that's in these pots as well, these small pots, is absolutely fine. I have half filled the big pot already with soil. I have a bucket with soil underneath me, so I think I'm completely ready to go. I'm just going to replant all of these uh, plants together in that pot in fast forward, because you've seen it all before, and then they're gonna look lovely together, and then I'm gonna show you how I clean off these leaves to try and get rid of all these little monsters that are deforming my plant. Anyway, I'm so pleased with these though, how this has worked out. I'm so pleased that after uh, having my big, wonderful, Monstera Deliciosa plant, having to 
completely hack it to bits that I managed to save the plant and I've learned so much along the way. That's why I've been making lots of videos about this specific plant and you know who she is because I call her my queen. Um, so that you can all see that it is possible, even if your plant has root rot all the way through, to go in. These are vines. Prune back. Make sure you've got nodes and a bud for a leaf and you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to produce new plants like this and you just need a little bit of patience. So let's get on with this. If I can disturb the roots as little as possible, I shall do so. I don't think these are going to have any big roots anyway. As I said, this little one only has tiny roots. I can't put that in the pot until I've filled up with soil. So I'll leave that on the side for a minute. This bigger one feels like it's got a lot more roots, so I need to dig further down to make sure I get everything with it. Oh yes, this one's done really well in this pot. I can feel. So there we go. Oh, she's got lovely big roots, this one. Now look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So that is ready to go in my pot. And of course, I want that leaf to be on the side. Now I need to move this pot over so I'm going to have space to put it in. And dig her down into the soil enough. Stem. So I've covered her roots. So she's there for now. And I can put some of this soil straight in there. Actually fill up a bit more. There's no need to not do that. Get her in and support it a bit. So, got my first one in. <laughs> right. Now for the next biggest, I'll put this on the floor, this lovely pot. Um, this leaf, I'm going to want to probably take off at some point, so let's just go for this. See if we can get her out easy. Got another little one. And that's coming out easily. It's only, again, got a few roots, not very much. The small ones don't have much in the way of roots, but they're still doing fine. So we'll put those in last. This one has more roots, I can feel that, so I need to be careful to get everything. So now I'm gonna see if I can do this without making too much mess by lifting it over the other pot. Wow. Didn't help much, but a little bit. So the roots are coming out, good. Yes, oh, lovely long roots on this one too. Look at that, lovely beautiful white roots on that. So, we can put her on this edge. Make sure she's in, saw it around. It looks like there's going to be plenty of space in this pot for all of these and they will reorganize themselves and turn the same way towards the light and so forth so they'll look pretty later on. Final pot. So here I also have two stems. Get those out. So here we go, another one. Oh, beautiful roots. I want to get everything with it. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely long roots. And I can see the bottom of this stem Below, now I actually want to show you something with this one. So I'm going to quickly wash it off and bring it in to show you. So look at this little plant. Four leaves, still going on. And you can see these roots are lovely white and fresh and perfect. So they're really, really good. Very long, this plant has found out that it needs to produce roots up here on this part of the stem. But the bottom part of the stem is rotten. So I'm going to cut that off to be able to put this back in the soil without that rotten piece creeping up into the fresh roots and stem but it has survived because look at all these lovely roots so just chop that off so we'll just get in and see where that rot starts and get it off yeah gone now i don't think that's going to affect the rest of the lovely little plant as i said it figured it out itself so it was good that i got in and i saw that now so I'll leave this on the side for a minute as well because I need to fill up the soil more to get it into the pot. More soil here. With big bits of bark. Might as well fill up. So we can get these pieces all standing up nicely. 
So now we got this last bigger one. It's got big roots as well, I can feel. Get this one, put it in. Here she comes. This one has lovely roots all over. Look at those gorgeous roots on this beautiful little plant. Original leaf, two new baby leaves. Gorgeous. This one I'm going to put on the front side. So I'm going to turn around my pot a minute because I want this on the front side. This one looks very nice. Whoopsie. So I'll make my hole. Get her right down in here again. And then here she goes. And then fill around. So nice. So that's three. Move this pot now. So that is three of the pots in one. Now I have my stem piece here that I just want to place in with its root. <laughs> I'm going to put this in between these two pieces here. So straight down in. Then I need to keep the hole open while I put the root down into the soil before it all cakes in. There it goes. And then cover up that. Perfect. And it has a leaf bud on it, so it can easily take off. Now I have my other smaller pieces here, but I feel like I need to put a little bit more soil in this pot first. So now I think I have enough soil in here, so I have space to put my last lovely pieces here. This one can also go in the middle somehow. It's got a little tiny root, so it can just hide in here. Put it down, in, soil around. That's there. Another one here. This one has a lot of big roots, so just in a little bit and leave it like that. Last one with beautiful roots that I'm going to put in here. So, in the middle of planting there, my battery decided to run out, but well, I got finished of course, and now I have my whole bundle of plants, my queen, put back together. And I'm not going to water this now straight away, because I don't want to stress everything out now that I've been messing about with their roots and so forth that are very tender. So all that I want to do right now is clean off the leaves and I'm going to show you the mix that I'm going to use to clean these leaves off and how I do it. So, a little bowl, normal dishwashing liquid and I just put, you know, like a teaspoon of that in there and then what I have here is cold pressed organic neem oil. So I'll put a little drop of this in there as well, just give it a good shake to make sure it's mixed in. Make sure we can get that good old smell out. <laughs> it's not the best smelling stuff in the world, but it helps you to get rid of the rips and other things. So I'll put a dollop of that in. One, two dollops, I think that will do for this. And then mix those with a bit of room temperature warm water. So I've mixed this with water, and now I have these. These are normal face pads for cleaning off your face, you know, makeup and cream or whatever. These are very good for being able to wipe over the leaves. So I'm just going to get on with that. Make sure that you do this on the top and bottom of every single leaf. So just get on, rub outwards towards the edge. Like this, it's also going to make your leaves lovely and shiny. And there we go, all the way down to the end, rub it all off. This is like a good massage for your plant. <laughs> so, carry on with the rest here. Oh, this leaf is loving this, I'm sure. Every bit of dust and dirt off. A real good start up. I've done the top now, and then also rub along the stem all the way down in the crevice here as well. Make sure you get into that. All the way down to the bottom. So you clean it up. Discard of that. 
and take another one as necessary. Now I need to do the underside, so I'll get on with that. This is one of the big original leaves and this leaf has been doing so well through this whole process, through being pruned off and propagated in water and then soil. It stayed green and solid and looks really lovely. So I'm really pleased with that leaf. So I would suggest before you start with a new leaf to discard of this because there could be thrips laying on that that might make it through this procedure. Next little leaf. And the same applies. I've used two different sides now of this pad for this leaf. I really hope this is going to help this plant out. So I will get on with this now in fast forward because it's going to take a pretty time to get all this done. And then we'll look at my plant at the end. It's just so nice knowing that my queen is getting more and more sorted out. Now I had to move the plant around a little bit to get to the front side here. I really, really can't wait to put her outside in the garden for the summer. I hope that's going to be the boost that she needs to grow into a big, beautiful plant again. It shouldn't take that long now. So that's my plant all cleaned off now. And I can tell you, it smells really <laughs> whew, a lot like neem oil, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, I would suggest that you use glass when doing this with the neem oil actually because it does feel like it blocks the pores a little bit and so forth. Um, it's not going to do any damage to you but it might feel a little bit better if you have some gloves on. But now at least I know I've given my plant a thorough clean over and a thoroughly good chance now to carry on producing its new leaves, readjusting its roots acclimatizing again to its new pot and I hope this summer this plant is going to take off. I'm actually thinking that I might be putting this outside in my garden at my cottage in a shady area amongst other plants to encourage a lot of beneficial insects onto the plant to help keep it clear. If this hasn't been a success um, when I check in a couple of days or so to see if I've managed to get the thrips off and for the new leaves to be able to come out without getting damaged straight away. But now I'm going to be keeping this plant in an area on its own, so it should be, it should do okay. So this is basically the follow-up and the accumulation of all the propagations I took from my queen. My beautiful big plant here with this lovely new leaf and the rest of the plant here this plant was a mountain, it was huge, it was absolutely gorgeous. Make sure you go back and see those videos if you haven't seen them yet. But this is on its way back. Lots and lots of lovely immature leaves coming out, but that's okay. They will start getting fenestrations and slits the longer they grow up when the vines get more mature. But there are lovely new aerial roots growing out quite long from the newer area on the vines as well so that's really great. I will leave this now as I said for the rest of the day and not water it just to let it acclimatize and then I'll go and give it a water tomorrow and then I will keep an eye on it that way. The window behind me here, oh sorry my queen, where I have my other part of my queen is an east facing window but under a ledge so it gets a little bit of direct light and then the rest is bright indirect light and this plant is loving it, it's growing, it's taking off now very quickly since it's been here. And the same with my Monstera Deliciosa Alba Variegata, so it's doing a good job and that's why I think this bundle of joy here is going to take off just as well after. So let's go in for a quick closer look at all of these plants together. So here she is all put together again apart from the larger piece that you've seen up on my windowsill that's going to be staying separate um, seeing as it's doing so well but all these smaller parts in one pot and some of the original leaves like this beautiful big one here still looking amazing and green and to show what the fenestrations and the slits are going to look like later on it's so nice that there are so many um, original leaves here to show these beautiful fenestrations and slits. And again, this just shows that hacking a plant apart, pruning it back, propagating it, you can get yourself a lovely new plant 
or if you want to, many new plants. But of course, I want a bush of plants. And these are all starting to push out a new leaf. So I really need to get them into a place where they're not going to be getting attacked by insects that's causing these lovely young leaves to brown out and get infections and so forth because these vines, all these stem cuttings here have really, really been doing their best to grow out lovely roots and new leaves as you can see here. Isn't that just wonderful? They have the zest for life, they want to carry on and I want to carry on with this plant. I am absolutely loving the whole process of this. As I always say, I love the process more than the final result, actually. And yes, Monstera plants can be found out and about the green one everywhere and anywhere near, near enough. So I could go and get myself a whole new plant and just be done with it. But that's not the fun of it for me. This is the fun of it. Look at this. This was the top part of my queen and look how well she's growing out. Lovely new leaves and the second new baby leaf already has fenestrations and slits and the third one is on the way. So within a week or two I will have another leaf and I'm sure by the end of the summer this plant will be over a meter tall. Loving this. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing these plants close together and has given you a little bit more understanding of what you can do if you have a Monstera deliciosa that you're having trouble with. You can do soil propagation straight away, but then you need to keep the soil moist. So you probably will need to put um, the plant in some kind of bag or you can do it in sphagnum moss or any other kind of medium to grow out those roots. You could do it in water and lecker balls. I've seen that become popular or just in water like I have and added a little fertilizer now and again to some of them um, and it seems to do the trick and they seem to always get roots within the first two months. Some are much slower than others but around the two month period then you should have a decent amount of roots. You don't let it too long like the one I planted in here earlier, the roots were like 15 centimeters long, don't let them get like that. That will make it hard for the plant to acclimatize to soil, but that stem I had hidden behind other plants and kind of forgot about it. It was next to a grow light. It's been like that for months now, months, but it's in the pot and we'll see how it does. Otherwise I suggest around about three inches maximum or so, and then you could put it into some kind of other medium if you want to make sure that you keep the roots moist while they're growing out. Um, I've just gone straight from water to soil. It's a bit of a risk. Just remember that it is a bit of a risk. You've got to be careful with the watering, you know, over watering or under watering. You need to keep them moist for a while, but you don't want to rot them out either. And I've managed to keep these all going straight from water to soil. So that does work as well. This is just one other way of doing this. But um, I really just want to emphasize that any vine plant can be saved. You can do different things with them. You can create different designs. If you don't want it long, you can go in and prune it and make a bushier plant. And I could go in and keep this pruned so it stays like a bushier plant or I can let it start vining up like most monsteras do. Um, we'll see as it goes. We'll see as it goes because I do, of course, want to see the more mature leaves. And if you want that, then you need to let the vines grow up because the leaves get bigger and more fenestrated and more slits the taller the vine gets, okay? The longer the vine gets upwards. I spoke about soil, I spoke about watering, the light, indirect bright light is an absolute must for these plants. They can, of course, be kept in a lower light condition, but you're not going to have a plant with the highest quality of life. It will just kind of survive, but it won't thrive in any way and it could get stressed and that is where you're going to have problems with uh, thrips and any other kind of insects that might be in your environment if they're close to other plants. I told you how to work with the thrips with the neem oil, dishwasher liquid, organic uh, and any other thing that you may be having in your area that you can clean off the leaves with. Another thing that I'm going to be doing with this plant that I haven't got here at the moment but I need to go out and buy in a moment is I'm going to get cinnamon and I'm going to cover the top of this soil with cinnamon. That also helps to keep fungus away, fungus gnats away from laying eggs in the soil and things like that. So the neem oil and a combination with cinnamon is a good protection and I hope that is going to give these plants an extra better chance now of doing well.
So anyway, with all that said, I really hope you <laughs> liked seeing this. Thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up. And I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.